Hello everybody, this is Fernando for the latest Cryptids and Monsters of the Week video. While I'm continuing to hear some of your latest old and new suggestions on the aliens and UFO side, I thought I would mix this one in here. That way I can continue some of this playlist on the Cryptids and Monsters side and then talk about this random feature here. Interestingly enough, this actual suggestion has been done before. So this random entry brought up something that people have suggested in the past. The reason I was kind of hesitant on that is because it's classified more in the lines of a globster, something that could be easily misidentified for another real life animal, if but for the fact that involving decomposition and other forms of of carcass matters that it looks like something else completely different and so i'm going to talk about that more here in a minute but still it was interesting that it fell on this subject matter and as always whatever the random generator lands on that's what i'll talk about here so yes indeed this has been suggested in the past so those of you that were patient on it Definitely, this is your chance to be able to finally see this video here. In fact, you're looking at a representation of it now, and it's known as the Stronce Beast. So let's go ahead and let's talk about that here, and then that way I'll be able to give my own thoughts and opinions on it. I'd love to hear what your thoughts are too. So what was the Stronce Beast? Well, as the name implies, it was a monster, but in this case, a carcass of a monster. So in other words, a dead one, probably decomposing for who knows how long, that had washed ashore there on an island of Stronce, hence the name associated with it, the Stronce Beast. This happened a while back, too. You're talking about September 25th, 1808, when it was initially discovered. My goodness, that's such a long time ago. But yes, apparently there was a big storm that occurred in that area. By the way, Stronson is located near an area called Orkney Islands, Scotland. And after that storm presided, that's when, lo and behold, there was this carcass there. This carcass, already because of its look, it definitely had an amazing set of characteristics. But the next association is this, the size of it. That's essentially what still causes lots of mysteries when it comes to its identification. But yes, it was described as being 55 feet in length. Very large, right? Very, very large, especially when you consider some of the sizes of, let's say, your average dinosaur. But there's a chance that it could have even been longer because only part of the tail was there. So who knows how long the original part of this tail was as well, which could have put it even much further than the initial 55 feet of length. But there was very little identifiable on it otherwise other than its size because it was a rotting carcass like in other words it was floating along the sea who knows how long and then the storm ended up washing it ashore and so other parts of it as well could have made it even larger too but it was hard to associate details of it other than this this is essentially what it was described that its flesh was described as being like coarse ill-covered beef entirely covered with fat and tallow and without the least resemblance or affinity to fish. The skin, which was gray colored and had an elastic texture, was said to be about two inches thick in parts. So that's pretty much the closest link when it comes to any details tied to what this character looked like, at least the carcass that was discovered there. Anything else about what the rest of its body looked like, how it originally looked like, um, any other features, like who knows, like if it had fins or if it had different types of scales, other appendages. I guess all that stuff was there and then it wasn't after the carcass essentially rotted away after it was floating for who knows how long and then what washed the shores the only details that were there so what this could have originally been there's so many theories tied to it first i'll talk more about the fantastical side associated with it uh there's the idea is that it could have been something along the lines of a Loch Ness type monster, like something else involving uh, the classic design with the very, very long neck, the short head, and then something involving either a long tail or a large fin as well. Essentially that the Loch Ness monster, but somehow it was in that type of region there of Stronce, and then who knows what had happened to it, but it ended up being killed, and then it's decaying carcass 
went up there on top. There's that end. It could have been a long lost dinosaur that shows proof. Something else that there's other dinosaurs in and around that area. And then that's when this carcass was able to provide that specific link. There's that end. Then there's the more naturalistic and the more realistic side. And that's this. The reason why, again, I was kind of hesitant to talk about it, about being a globster. A globster is more on the lines of a large unidentified carcass. But the reason it's so unidentified is because it really was, like in a lot of cases before, they really were real animals, real large animals. Like if you take something involving like a whale and it's found and then after it's been decomposing for who knows how long, it looks like a globster. It looks like something that is otherworldly, something from... Who knows what other type of dimension, but that's just because of the decay associated with it. So there's strong links to this creature having been actually what you're looking at here, a large basking shark. This is a shark that is one of the largest of the world, and this creature, whatever it was, this could have been its original look, but all that decay associated with it took away so many other recognizable parts that would have normally been linked to a basking shark that it makes it look at something else. Or there's a theory that it still could have been a real shark, just something along the lines of an unknown species of shark, something else that has never been found before, but lo and behold, there it is again, washed ashore there. And then there's other theories that it could have just been some other type of feature, some other type of creature that just has never been identified as well. But yeah, that's at least some of the more realistic stances associated with it. It's still an animal here from part of Earth, but it just happens to be classified in this case as a beast, some unknown beast or some unknown monster more linked along the lines of the dinosaur era. And to perhaps there was some more help because there was other witnesses that were there that described it as being about four feet wide. It had a circumference of about 10 feet as well. And there were these type of paws slash wings that were discernible on it. And then the skin itself was noted to be very, very smooth, especially towards the head-like area and then towards the tail as well. And then the fins as well had some kind of bristles on there. And then there was another set of bristles all along the backside of it. So who knows if that still has anything to do with the realistic animals I was mentioning earlier. But otherwise, what really throws things out of the loop when it comes to that is this. The largest known basking shark, which again is closely linked to this identification of the Stronce beast is about 40 feet in length. This creature, though, this carcass was 55 feet in length. And remember, it could have been even much larger considering that only certain parts of it were found. So either this was truly a dinosaur-like cryptid that was found or this was a much, much larger basking shark than has ever been found before or, again, some other type of creature that remains misidentified. If it's all about the size, 55 feet plus in length definitely throws things out of the consideration when it comes to it being something more of a realistic animal and not something from a long lost path. But that's pretty much it. That's all the information associated with this creature, this Stronce beast. More it's since 1808, can you believe that? More than 200 years, and it still has lots of discussions of it before. As far as I could tell, there hasn't been anything in terms of any parts of it um, held over after all this time. I don't think there's any recorded evidence of it, like something in some kind of jar or something else like that. So whatever happened to the actual carcass itself, who knows? But if someone has any more information on that, then please post those comments below. My own personal thoughts, my own personal opinions, I tend to side more on it being a, a carcass of an identifiable animal, but on the side that it's much larger than anticipated. Like there's always going to be world record breakers, no matter how large an animal is as being the largest one of its species. There's bound to be another one somewhere out there that just happens to be even larger. So that's my own theory when it comes to that, because the fact that it was more on the line, so many globsters, again, are tied to real animals. I can't rule that out just yet. I wish there was more information, though, as far as 
like uh, actual evidence of this creature and so on because doing any kind of, of DNA test today that would have absolutely um, helped to identify or rule out any other type of animals that it has a link to here on earth but again those are just my own thoughts as well I would always love for it to be any other type of dinosaur like a plesiosaur or something else because that's always wonderful stuff too all right everybody thanks again as always take care bye